And now, Living Well with LDS Hospital. Welcome back, everybody. Okay, so whether you've grown it in your garden or just want to be able to incorporate it into your recipes, this is the time of year for cooking with squash. Yeah. And this is kind of a foreign concept to me. I'm so excited. We're here with Allie Spencer from LDS Hospital. She's breaking down our squashes. And not literally, but <laughs> that would be messy, right? No, Very messy. figuratively. But I want to be clear because there's different types of squashes and there's summer squash, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's fall. So what's the difference? So we do have our summer squash. These are what we call winter squash and it depends on when they're harvested. So we equate fall with pumpkins, right? right. Um, and we a lot of times have more recipes like butternut squash. So we've got spaghetti squash and butternut squash and pumpkin and acorn squash. These are some of the winter squashes. Okay, you went in order. So you yes. said this was spaghetti yes. mm -hmm. and then butternut, butternut pumpkin. pumpkin. I recognize that uh -huh. one. <laughs> and acorn. <laughs> acorn. Whereas our <laughs> summer squashes, you think of like zucchini or yellow squash or those crookneck squashes. Yes. Um, they're less starchy and we see those oh, harvested in the summer. Oh, good to know. Okay, yeah. interesting. We're learning here. Yes. Um, now, Allie is a registered dietitian, so tell me about the nutritional value. I mean, the last thing I ate that was a squash was pumpkin pie. <laughs> And I feel like that might not have been the healthiest option. <laughs> it was probably a healthier option than some of the other pies. Okay. But okay. what I love about winter squash um, is that they are a little bit starchier, so they can be a good substitution for sweet potatoes and potatoes and noodles um, oh. and rice, even because they have a higher starch content. Still lower in starch than those, but they're packed full of vitamin C and vitamin A. Their seeds are a great source of uh, minerals, and they have lots of soluble fiber that's really good for your heart. So this is a good thing, everybody, that we need to be eating, and you have a few different ideas for how to actually yeah. go about cooking it, because, yeah, I wouldn't know the first place to start, and you say the first thing you might try is roasting it. Yep, roasting how would you it. Do that? Mm -hmm. So one of the things to keep in mind with winter squash is they have a thicker skin, so it's great for shelf life. Okay. They can last days, months in your in your pantry. Really? Months? <laughs> months, <That's> yes. Months. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Okay, not six months, but a couple <laughs> months. Um, so you have to be really cautious. You want to get a sharp knife and you want to cut through okay. the skin. So when you're roasting it, you interest is you can And you said you use, when you use a fork with like something like this with a spaghetti squash, it creates a noodle-y Yes, shape. so, so what's really great about um, spaghetti squash, if you've never cooked with it before, so you, with all the squashes, I want to say, first of all, when you cut it, you want to take the, the seeds out. So you'll have seeds and you'll okay. have, like, like you've, if you've carved a pumpkin, right. you know what's inside. Right. So that same thing, so scoop that out. Um, but with spaghetti squash, after you've roasted it, you can actually take a fork and you just scrape it along and it'll pull out into noodle-like um, substance. So substance, that's where you're yep. using it to replace some of the other carbs, Ex like the actual yep. noodles, exactly, or so, spaghetti or whatever. Yeah, so it's a great substitution to use in yeah instead of noodles and spaghetti, or you can even just use it as a, a dish on the side. Oh, I love that. Garlic and onions. Okay, these yeah. are such good mm -hmm. tips. You also say you can use this sort of thing in soups yes. or stews. Yes, you can. So you can do it a couple ways. You can cube. You know, you can cube it beforehand and throw it in, or think about cooking it first and then puree it. And so you can make your, oh. um, you know, butternut squash soup, or you can make pumpkin soup. Uh, you could make some really yummy soups with that pureed. You're vegetable. throwing something like this in a blender. Yeah. And so you want to cook it first. Yeah, cook it first. Let's be clear. Cook it first, <laughs> and then yes, yeah, so you can put it in a blender, or you could use an immersion blender. You oh. must. Or if you want to, you could even use canned pumpkin. I like that. love that. And then of course the seeds. We yep. can't. And before mentioning that, because those are like our favorite this time of year. Yes. And so seeds, if you've been to the grocery store, are very expensive. So if you're going to be cooking squash anyway, again, we said scoop those seeds out, rinse them off, get them away from the membrane, and then you roast them in the oven. Just a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper, and you're good to go. Oh, Allie, you are so smart, and I love that you're sharing us 
all this information. Um, Intermountainhealthcare.org slash nutrition is where we can all go to find more information on all of this and this whole segment and of course more information as well because you have so much good yes. stuff on your website. Uh, so go there everybody and we're being resourceful with our veggies and coming up next we are going to be resourceful with our energy and right after the break we are talking about how we can save on utility bills every single month and that's coming up in just a few. Flooring for Good Things Utah provided